We welcome you to ESPN's College Football Primetime. The talent-rich, veteran-led West Virginia Mountaineers are ready for the spotlight. Tonight, these Big East speed burners have come three hours cross state to Huntington. It's Marshall's home opener as they host West Virginia. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore, as always, joined by my partner, Rod Gilmore. Early on this season, this year's Big East doesn't quite look like last year's Big East. Cincinnati's already taken a tough loss mm -hmm. to defending champs. Pitt has already taken a tough loss yep. out west. But this West Virginia team with their experience and their talent, this is the team many are now talking about. Well, th there's a buzz about this team in Morgantown. They make a comparison to the 2007 team that went to a BCS game and beat Oklahoma. They think this team is similar and with good reason. And they got a lot of starters back. Their two superstar players, Noel Devine and Jock Sanders, said no to the NFL and came back. An explosive offense. I'm excited to see these guys in action. For the Marshall faithful, this game means absolutely everything. You know, this is a program that has a long history of winning, mm -hmm. but not lately. And measuring yourself against the in-state power, the big brother, <laughs> it can be a humbling experience, but it can also be opportunistic. You, you think they're tired of hearing that and getting all that grief about how you can't beat the big brother? Well, we've heard some of that this week while we've been here. This team played at Ohio State last week. The horseshoe, big environment, right? The players said, nah, -uh. this game bigger more important than having played Ohio State last week the West Virginia Marshall series dates back to 1911 however it's only been played nine times much heated political discussion centering on its future West Virginia has never lost to Marshall now Marshall's new head coach is a former West Virginia player assistant and recent recruiting guru Doc Holliday Doc has said that people refer to this as a rivalry game, but he feels it's not a rivalry when you haven't beaten the big guys. Of course, opposite Doc will be his most recent boss, West Virginia head coach Bill Stewart. And Bill Stewart is kind enough to join us now. And coach, how do you approach playing against a man who was on the inside of your program just nine months ago? Well, it's about the players in the arena. This isn't about Bill Stewart or Doc Holliday. Doc's a friend, been one for many, many years. I'm sure be many years to come. What it's about is these young men out there in the old gold and blue and the guys out there in the green and white. It's going to be a fun night tonight. New quarterback for your team. All of college football knew how dangerous Pat White was with his speed. Jarrett Brown last year had the strong arm. What does Geno Smith offer for your offense? He's a combination of both. He can run it, and he has a tremendous arm. Most importantly, he's a great leader and understands what we're trying to do offensively. So he's ahead of the curve a little bit, knowledge-wise, and I just hope that's his second start second complete game so uh, he'll get better and better with each outing thanks coach we'll let you get to work you betcha thank you coach bill stewart his third year at west virginia there is geno smith remember stewart took over the program after winning the 2008 fiesta bowl doc holiday was actually one of the leading candidates for that west virginia job prior to that so we get to get a good look at geno smith tonight will he be the next great one so many good backfield players through the years for West Virginia. Well, I can tell you this. We saw him in his first action, significant action last season against Marshall. He came in after Jared Brown was hurt after the fourth play of the game, and I was surprised at his composure in that game. A guy who hadn't played really at all was thrown into a tough situation and responded, led the team, didn't try to do too much. They got a big win last year when he was, on the, when he, when he was a starting quarterback, essentially. Bill Stewart will be relying on him. He was actually, Bill Stewart was a Marshall assistant coach some 30 years ago here. This game, of course, about state pride, program pride, and Doc Holliday knows that very well. He grew up just about 20 minutes away from Marshall in Huracan, West Virginia. And even though he's a local, this is his first ever game in this stadium, Joan C. Edwards Stadium, which has a robust crowd here tonight, 38,000 plus here in Huntington to see Marshall and number 23, West Virginia. Marshall will be receiving. Back deep will be Martin Ward and Andre Booker. And Booker fields it for a touchback, the strong kick from Corey Smith. Andre Booker with the catch in the end zone for the touchback. 
So Brian Anderson, the senior starting quarterback for Marshall. Coaches know that he's not going to wow you with arm strength or speed, but he's decisive, he's accurate, and when he plays the way he practices, he can be very productive. Yeah, and he's also a really smart quarterback. He knows where to go with the football. Now, they were overwhelmed last week by Ohio State. They did not score an offensive touchdown. So you have to know that they have a lot of anxiety, some desire. They want to get that first score of this season because Ohio State just blanked this offense. That's a tough task, opening up your season at the horseshoe. They dropped that game 45 to 7. Ward gets the call. And he is taken down at the 23-yard line by Scooter Berry. Oh, we told you about Anderson, the quarterback. Well, look at their skill players. They actually have a tandem in the backfield. Andre Booker shares that spot back there with Ward. Ward's the inside guy. Booker is the outside guy. We'll look for that combination up front. They have a pretty good offensive line. Schofield has his hands full with a really good nose tackle and Chris Neal. Anderson to pass on second down. Gets it to his big tight end, Lee Smith, who pushes ahead for the first down. Lee Smith is a legitimate big-time NFL prospect. He goes 6'6", 267, and he started his career at Tennessee before having a few problems. Well, you were really stunned when you saw him at practice the other day. When he stood up, you were like, whoa, that is really a big-time tight end. There is the senior from Tennessee. He was actually dismissed after an off-the-field incident there and has turned his life around here at Marshall. Married a father of two, has a 3.21 GPA. He's a real success story of what college football is all about, giving a young man a chance to mature and grow up. First down carry for Ward, and he has an opening on the right side, and here goes Martin Ward. Pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Robert Sands tracked him down, but a good, strong run by Ward. Well, you can't get outside without great blocking. Watch 75 right here with a great block. That's the block that opens everything up for you. That's Wood, who opens that right side. Great block there, and then a nice block down the field also by his wide receiving mate, Dobson. Robert Sands, who was able to track down Martin Ward, is injured at the end of that play. Now, he is one of the top defensive players for West Virginia. Yeah, he goes at about 6'5", 220, big-time NFL prospect. Really a nice angle he took to get over there and make the play. But apparently something happened when he got to the sideline trying to make that tackle. So with Robert Sands down, we will take a timeout. Marshall in prime position early on. Stay with us. First home game for new Marshall head coach Doc Holliday. First down at the 12 now for his offense. Booker. Trying to get the corner, and he is forced out at the seven-yard line by Brandon Hogan. Andre Booker's very quick running back, has good lateral speed after the long run by Ward. He stays in the game here. Martin Ward put them in this position, a 55-yard run, and the safety for West Virginia, Robert Sands, was injured at the end of that play. Oh, Tess, they, they struggled in the red zone last season only getting touchdowns about half the time, kicking way too many field goals. Again, Booker. And this time, he is wrapped up right away by Najee Good. Andre Booker on the carry. You know, we talk about the red zone being inside the 20. Now, the gold standard is getting touchdowns 80% of the time. That's what Bill Walsh used to talk about, 80% of the time. Hardly anybody gets that. In college football, if you're doing more than 70%, that's excellent. This team was down around 52% last season. All those years later and all that Bill Walsh knowledge that was put into you at Stanford still stays with you. Can't go away. There is Robert Sands out here on this series after being injured making the tackle on the 55-yard run. Third down now. Line to make is the two. Anderson 
has time over the middle and a touchdown for Ontavius Wilson to start the game. Good look at opening drive by the thundering herd. Warner's extra point is up and good. So Brian Anderson, after the long run by Ward, finds Dobson on third down, and Marshall strikes first. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. That is Herd Fest 2010 as had country music playing. Thousands of football fans coming out here in Huntington, West Virginia yesterday to get ready for their home opener. Coach Doc Holliday seeing his team's first offensive touchdown of the season. Remember last week against Ohio State. They return to block kick and they get on the board here to lead West Virginia 7 zip Brian Anderson to Antavius Wilson Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore here in Huntington. Tyler Warner set to kick in the very dangerous Noel Devine back deep for the Mountaineers. And a short kick to keep it away from Devine. This is Clark, the fullback, out to the 40-yard line. Hey, Tess, you know, sometimes there's confusion in the secondary. Let's go look at this touchdown pass here. This is the receiver out here. He is actually going to take off inside. Now, watch. We'll take a look here. What happens with the linebacker, Najee Good, 52. He thinks he's supposed to take a piece of him to hit him. He doesn't. He lets him get by. And the outside guys are playing zone. A little bit of confusion in that West Virginia secondary as to who's supposed to take which man or whether they're even playing man or zone. Left Wilson free. Empty backfield now for Geno Smith. Out of the gun, Devine now joins him. And here is Devine, first carry of the night. And he gets out to the 45-yard line taken down by Kellen Harris. So. Last year, Geno Smith played in five games, but now this is his team, the sophomore from Miami. Ironically, he was recruited by Doc Holliday when Doc was at Florida, and then came to West Virginia when Doc took the job there. Now he's out to beat him in his home debut uh, yeah. here at Marshall. And he says he understands why Doc took the job and left, but he says he didn't get a chance to say goodbye when he took off. <laughs> The pass now on second and five. And he's got first down yardage out to Stedman Bailey. Well, West Virginia has a big three, or really a little three, since none of their impact players stand over 5'9". Noel Devine, everybody's heard about him. Great player, said no to the NFL, came back for his senior year. Great inside runner and great speed. Jock Sanders, great hands on the outside. It's terrific in space, one-on-one, -on -one, gets yards after the catch, as does Tavon Austin. Both those guys on the outside, working with a lot of room, are dangerous. Devine cuts to the near side, trying to get to the edge. And there's that speed, stays in, and jumps out to the 26-yard line. He should have little everything there, Devine. Yeah, you saw the burst, the change of direction, the vision, all of that on display here. Inside, change of direction, just a little stutter step, the burst of speed to get to the outside, the vision to recognize where it was. At 111 yards and a touchdown last week against Coastal Carolina, 16 100-yard games in his career. Devine now comes in motion. Smith steps up in the pocket and dumps it off to Noel. 
and he scoots down to the 23 yard line just short of that first down line tackled by Mario Harvey you know Tess this offensive line struggled last week surprisingly four veterans one newcomer Jeff Braun on the right tackle spot but this is a veteran line that people were disappointed they didn't play as well out of the shoot as they thought they would so a lot of determination on their part tonight to get it going the right way Marshall feels very confident in their front four matching up with them second and one's like a money play here Rod a lot of a lot of options choices. here. They go with Devine. And he just does get the yardage to make as he was taken down by Mario Harvey. Well, Tess, you mentioned that defensive line matching up pretty well. Well, maybe the biggest issue up front is how you deal with Vinnie Curry. Athletic guy on the end, has really been a good player, came on last season, real issues up front. And then we're going to keep our eyes on Mario Harvey. They call him Thumper. Why do you think that is? <laughs> there was another great descriptive that they offered up that we'll share with you a little later on. And Donald Brown is really active in the secondary as a strong safety spot. First down now for Gino and West Virginia at the 23. He's going to keep it himself. And he is taken down immediately by Donald Brown. You know, Tess, this offense is really designed for Smith. You know, when Rich Rodriguez was a coach here, this was a quarterback run designed offense with Cat White, all that kind of good stuff. Now it's much more spread, have the quarterback throw it, really use Divine and others to run the football. Geno Smith will not run it that much. He's not a Pat White kind of quarterback. Looking things over here, and now he wants to talk things over. You get a sense of the leadership and maturity out of Smith early on. Feels like it's his team, his offense. They will take a break, trailing by seven, but on the move. Rod, I called for a taxi earlier today. Look what came. Oh, the bus. I so want that. That's the direct TV drive bus for the national championship. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, taking a ride with it up to Columbus because tomorrow it is Monster Saturday. And at 3.30 Eastern, Ja'Cory Harris and Terrell Pryor, they are going to hook up number two Ohio State, number 12 Miami. The bus will be there. Then you can join Kirk and Brent at 7 o'clock as Alabama and Penn State will meet up. Number one Alabama, the Crimson Tide, going up against Joe Paterno. College football on ESPN Saturday. Also available online, on your phone, and Miami, Ohio State in 3D. It is a monster Saturday. Oh, can't wait. So after the timeout, Austin now in motion. They give it to Devine. And Devine tries to spin free two times, but then is wrapped up. Mario Harvey got to him first. Devin Arrington finished it off. You know, sometimes you have to understand when the play is over and not lose yardage. And sometimes great backs who have great speed want to try to make a fantastic play. And right now, there's nowhere to go yet. The, Noel Devine is continuing to try to do something. Devin Arrington is all over him. Sometimes you just go down, Tess, and you don't you don't try and get that extra yard. Play the next play. Well, the next play now is a third and 12. Empty backfield. Out of the gun is Smith. Smith now being chased and just throws it up and completes it to Austin. And Austin is taken down well short of the first down by Devin Arrington. Oh, the pressure came from <laughs> Michael Janet. I'd rather be lucky than good. I mean, that's as ill-advised a pass as you can throw. You're inside the 20-yard line. You're backpedaling on your back foot. You got nothing on it, and you heave it up. You're lucky this isn't picked off. Tyler Bittencourt on to attempt a 35-yarder. Been a clutch kicker, has good technique. And Bittencourt puts this through. So after the defense tightens up, a field goal on the board. Marshall leads 7-3. Seven three Marshall on top here. Don't walk back 
Doc Holliday, long been considered one of the very best recruiters in college football. Now at the helm of this Marshall program. He was on that staff at Florida, won a national championship there, did some great recruiting while he was on Urban Meyer's staff. Considers Urban a very good friend. Smith's kick here. Fielded at the three by Booker. And Andre Booker is wrapped up just short of the 18-yard line. A well, tragedy, of course, struck this state so connected to the coal industry. This is called the Friends of the Coal Bowl Trophy. And the 29 coal miners that were lost at the Upper Big Branch Mine Disaster this past April being honored by Marshall's football team as they are wearing a memorial helmet sticker in every football game this season. And you, you really feel for this area. They've had three severe mining accidents in the last four years. This community has really been hit hard with those tragedies. There you see the sticker there with the 29. Anderson now. Just a short gainer to Courtney Edmondson. JT Thomas quickly getting up to meet Edmondson. I think they've improved since last week. We often hear about that discussion. Teams get better, make their biggest improvement from week one to week two. It also helps when you're not playing Ohio State every week. But it is true. I mean, it's an old axiom in college football, but the gap between week one and week two, that's where you see yep. the most improvement. Remember, no exhibition games. None of that preseason in the college game. Here's Troy Evans. And Evans gets it out to the 24-yard line. They'll bring up third down. Brandon Hogan was quick to get on top of him. He's their best cover corner of first team all Big Easter a year ago. Well, Tess, this, this offense is designed to get rid of the ball quickly. Three-step, throw it, a lot of screens, read option. Quarterback doesn't keep it very often. He, does, he prefers to throw it than run with it. Some pressure being shown. Now they back off. Anderson with time into the big tight end. That is Lee Smith and another first down for Marshall. Robert Sands back in the game defensively for West Virginia taking down Smith. Well, what they're doing offensively is trying their best to move the linebackers laterally. So they run wide, they throw wide, they bring the tight end behind the linebackers. Smith, a two-time team captain. Ward gets the call, and he goes straight ahead to the 34-yard line. Remember, he had that big 55-yarder that set up the touchdown for Marshall. You know, Tess, if you're going to run the ball inside, you got to move that nose tackle, Chris Neal. Now, that time, they were able to single up on him, and that's a tremendous job up front by Schofield, the center. We told you about that matchup, and if he can block Neal one-on-one, Marshall's going to have a good day running the football. Big Chris Neal. One of the best nose tackles in the nation. Second and five now. Edmondson close to first down yardage. Brian Anderson has just started his night six for six. Sands and Thomas in on the tackle. Well, you talked about him carrying over what he does in practice to games. And they were really surprised that he didn't play, he didn't play better last week against Ohio State. Uh, personally, I think Ohio State had something to do with that. But you can see he makes good decisions, he's accurate with the football, and he's not trying to do more than he can. Not trying to throw it 50 yards, because that's not his game. Doesn't have that kind of arm strength. What he can do is make good decisions and put the ball in the right place at the right time. Play action now. Anderson being pressured, and he tried to just get it out to Aaron Dobson. But it goes incomplete. His first incompletion of the game, the pressure came right up the middle from Anthony Leonard. Second down is critical here. West Virginia likes to get 
into pressure situations. When you have a lot of fast athletes in your secondary and linebacking spots, you love those third and long situations where you can really tee off on the quarterback. Second down is huge. Go with Ward. Well, delayed inside handoff, and he's going to lose a yard here. As Anthony Leonard was on top of it, Nache Good getting to the scene as well. well Tess, you, you see, we just saw the substitutions for West Virginia's defense. They brought in their pass rushing specialists, their extra corners, and now they can tee off on Anderson. This is what you try to avoid if you're Marshall. You don't want to be third and 10, third and 11. We'll see how Anderson responds here. Ward's in the backfield with him. Need to get out to the 49. Dumps it off to Ward. Bobbled it for a moment, and then white jerseys surrounded him. Sidney Glover was the first to get there. He's dealing with a tender hamstring, starting at and at safety tonight. So on to punt will be Case Whitehead. Brandon Hogan will be deep for West Virginia. Hogan calls for the fair catch, and he does so at the 12. Well, Tess opening drive, Marshall got it done first with Ward with a 55-yard run behind a great block by Wood up front. And then after that, they came right back on a big third down play. Ontavius Wilson managed to get open inside from Brian Anderson with an eight-yard touchdown catch. That's as good of a start as they could ask for coming off of a week that was just disastrous offensively against Ohio State. Now, granted, an Ohio State defense that you talk to people who have seen them up close, and they say perhaps the fastest, most athletic Buckeyes defense in the last 10 years. I got to tell you, I watched that game on tape over and over, and they are much faster defensively than people realize. Now, here's a fast guy. Little Noel Devine out to the 18, taken down by Michael Janik and Donald Brown. Noel Devine ranks number five on West Virginia's career rushing chart. He's had a couple 200-yard games in his career. Coming back for his senior year, showing a lot of leadership. Smith now streaking downfield was J.D. Woods. They're calling that incomplete. Now, did he bobble it, or was he already out of bounds? That's the question. He's got the ball in his hands. Now, from that angle, it Two looked like a down. catch. From that backside angle, it looked like he was in bounds. Now, from this angle, was he was he bobbling the ball? Right there, it looks like he's got control of it. That looks clean from that angle. Omar Brown came in and gave him a good shot, but it appeared that J.D. Woods secured the ball. Yeah, and, and I was looking at his left foot, and his left foot kicked up. Ruling on the previous play is under review. His left foot kicked up the little rubber pellets in the field of play, which would seem to indicate that he got the left foot in bounds. And in that other view we had, it seemed like he was cradling the ball. Now, what you need now, Tess, as you know, is indisputable video evidence so that it's clear you ought to reverse the call. Left foot looks good right there. Wouldn't you agree? I think that's a great angle to show that he was inbounds. I think the other angle shows the security of the ball. And you could see Doc Holliday. Watch Doc Holliday. Now, here's the angle that will show you the ball security. And I think that's really what the question is here. Yep. But you saw Doc Holliday immediately, the head coach at Marshall on the sideline, saying, hey, he juggled it. He juggled that ball. Well, you know what? I didn't see the juggle. It looked to me like he went to one arm wrapped around the ball from having two there. They say Doc Holliday is the best salesman in college football, the best recruiter in college football. He just sold the rep right there. Yeah, he did. He did. But you know what? There are a couple of other guys up here with, <laughs> with extra eyes. <laughs> so you get two looks there, both showing the boundary in question as well as the ball security. But remember, the call on the field is incomplete. So is there, in the judgment of the replay official, the indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field and we talk to these guys every week and they all tell us the same thing hey it's got to be clear from the evidence we'll 
Stewart couldn't believe it. Doc Holliday was all over it. And here it is. This is synced up. Both the boundary look and the ball possession look. Ball possession look on the right, boundary look on the left. Yeah, left foot in. Ball initially secured. That looks clean from that angle. So that video on the right yeah. started rolling at the moment that you saw the foot down on the left. After review, it was determined that the receiver caught the ball inbound to the first down, West Virginia, at the 38-yard line. I think that's a good job by that crew, led by referee Randy Smith. Yeah, and, and they took their time and did it right. They looked at the two elements. They looked at the foot, and they looked at possession. And they got it right. And they had clear, indisputable video evidence that they ought to change the call. And that's how you do it. So J.D. Woods says, indeed, mark it down. First down, Mountaineers. A 19-yard reception by Woods. He caught a touchdown pass last week from Geno Smith. His first ever catch. First and 10 for West Virginia at the 38-yard line. So West Virginia with a fresh set of downs as Devine dots the eye in front of the big 250-pound Ryan Clark. Devine wrapped down in the backfield right away by Kellen Harris. You know, Tess, I, I want to go back to a point. We talked about the change in the West Virginia offense from Rich Rodriguez. You would not see a fullback eye formation in a Rich Rodriguez offense. No, not at all. No, that, that's the change you see. This is a spread offense, yet they will go power, and you will not see Michigan tomorrow line up with a fullback and a tailback and power the ball inside. That's the difference in this offense at West Virginia now. Devine now in the slot. Smith avoids the rush downfield and has it complete to Sanders. Jock Sanders to midfield, a first down for the Mountaineers. 14-yard gain as Kevin Perry was able to tackle him after that. Notice how he keeps his wits and keeps his eyes downfield. Young quarterbacks don't often do that. Look at Smith. He's not concerned about the rush. He feels it. His eyes always down the field finds Jock Sanders. That's textbook. Sanders, the five foot seven senior, who's an outstanding playmaker, had eight catches and a touchdown last week in his season debut. Smith to pass again. He's five for five on the night. Now flush to the near side. He's going to tuck it and run, and he gets to the 45. I think Geno Smith showing some good upside here. He's different than Pat White. We know that. That's obvious. But compared to Jarrett Brown, you know, Jarrett Brown, they raved about that big cannon arm. Smith feels like a more well-rounded quarterback. Well, I, I think he's probably the best passer I've seen at West Virginia. You know, Jared Brown, you're right, strong arm, Pat White, very athletic, but not the same kind of touch, not the same kind of finesse, and not the same kind of pocket awareness as this youngster has. Another timeout being used. West by Virginia, Smith. second timeout. Of course, when you think about West Virginia college football history and Marshall, now everybody knows, take you back to November in 1970, coming home after a game against East Carolina. The team plane struck trees on a hillside about a mile from the runway. 75 lives lost, the worst single air tragedy in NCAA sports history. The entire Marshall University football team, coaches, the flight crew, fans, supporters lost. Of course, the movie We Are Marshall told that story so well.
And earlier tonight, this was the scene. Mary Jane Tolley, the widow of the head coach of that team, returning here to Marshall. First college football game she has taken in in 40 years. Flag comes in. Ball start. 61 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Now, there's nobody in this community, Rod, that it seems wasn't touched by what happened. 40 years later, you still see all the branches of that tragedy that touched this community to this day. Well, remember, 40 years ago, a lot of people who live here were, were kids then at that time, and they've grown up and they shared their stories about what it was like for them and relatives that they lost or friends of friends they heard about. And so just about everyone in this area was touched by it. Second and 10 now. Smith pressured right up the middle, but he is able to get to Austin. And Austin is loose. A first down and a lot more. He is so shaken bake, isn't he? Tavon Austin making something out of that. They have been raving about him all preseason camp. But it begins back here. Watch the pressure by Harvey. But we've talked about the presence and the coolness of Smith. He hung in there, was not rattled, and delivered the football. And you're right about Austin. It's all about yak, yards after the catch. And when you play West Virginia, you had better tackle these guys in space. Otherwise, they will get a lot of yardage after they make the catch. So that'll close out the first. West Virginia is on the move, but Marshall struck first. 7-3 game here in Huntington. Much more to come. Stay with us. Tessator, Rod Gilmore with you here in Huntington. Doc Holliday's team leading 7-3. Marshall has never beaten West Virginia. Geno Smith directing a good-looking drive here for the Mountaineers. Austin now, little screen. Austin sneaks by the first defender and then is taken down at the 23. Tavon Austin Rod is going to be a big part of their success this year. Well, he's so fast, but he's also got that great lateral quickness. He makes guys miss. And the offense is simple. Get him out in space, give him the ball, and let him make a guy miss. There's Devine now. Devine dragged down from behind by Vinnie Curry. Curry came in here as a prop 48. Couldn't play the first year, had to sit out. Now he's on course to graduate. One of those non-academic qualifiers who's been a success story. Don't you, don't you love hearing those stories? Those guys get that lesson and then they, they learn, mature from it, and then settle down, focus on academics, and enjoy the full benefits of being a student athlete. Watch this power jumbo backfield with Big Ryan Clark, third and one. Clark, first down, Mountaineers. He goes six foot and just a chicken nugget under 250. Bringing back the days of Owen Schmidt, mm -hmm. when Owen Schmidt was the big back who would pave the way. You know, when Clark came into this program, I remember talking to Coach Stewart a year ago. He came in at 260 pounds. He nearly ate his way out of his freshman year. <laughs> well, he can lower the boom. He is their short yardage specialist. So a first down now for the Mountaineers as Clark heads over to the bench and Devine comes back in. Devine looking for running room, not finding much at all. Donald Brown came up from his safety position. You know, you see Devine run inside and a lot of folks say, well, wait a minute. He's only 5'8", 5'9", 175 pounds. What, you see his thighs? Exactly. That guy can squat 500 pounds. He bench presses over 400 pounds. He's strong. He may not be tall, but he's a very strong and physical runner inside. 11th play of the drive.
Devine could not shake free that time. Mario Harvey. Mario Harvey, who they say is Fred Flintstone running a 4.4. That's how the coaches <laughs> described him to us. Yabba dabba do. Six foot, 250, and can flat out run. Yeah, he runs under a 4-4. Four, four. Watch him from the left side of the screen, moving inside, takes on a block, gets in, gets in there. Great, great quickness and speed. Rod, he already has six tackles tonight. Yeah, yeah, he was first team all conference last season. No surprise. He's so active. 100 tackles in two straight years for Harvey. Now third down. They need to get to the seven. Smith. Lots of time. Picks Devine. Spin move. And he's going to be close to that line to make it. Looks like they're marking him just short as Donald Brown tried to corral him. Oh, what a great play Donald Brown made. I mean, Noel Devine out there by himself, a lot of green. And I'm thinking, shake, move, touchdown. And Brown comes flying over and does a great job to keep Devine out of the end zone and short of the first down. On fourth and one. Clark and Linda Mood come in. Oh boy. Oh Remember, boy. They picked it up with this jumbo backfield last time it was short yardage. Yeah, I see. I'd be about points early on here. He didn't get it. He is short. Mario Harvey and Omar Brown stop Ryan Clark. What a stand for Marshall. What a stand for Mario Harvey. This kid is a player. Oh, he's big time. He is big time. Had 10 tackles against Ohio State, seven solos. He's a player. Watch me here. He takes on the block, gets rid of it, and then steps in to help Omar Brown, who was already in there. And that's just great, great, passionate defense. That's all it is down there. Brown's a team captain. Harvey's an all-conference stud. And they stretch out that chain, and it's not even close. Marshall Ball. Yeah, yeah, you see? And you heard me beforehand. I might take some points, you know, kind of keep the crowd out, dampen the momentum a little bit. But some guys like to roll the dice. And you have the benefit of now saying, okay, well, we have them backed up, and maybe we'll get the ball back in good field position. But still, now you got the crowd into it even more, and that defense feels like they can make plays. 23rd ranked team in the country Bill Stewart brought in here with a loaded senior laden skill position offense and a quarterback who's playing mature and well 13 play drive goes for zilch and movement up front as Neil just threw back Chris Schofield the center well, that's a good battle inside and Schofield has been getting the better of Chris Neal so far. Ball starts. 71 on the offense. Now, if you have to first down. Glad you're with us here Friday night. Listen, get just a little bit of sleep. Tomorrow morning, it all gets started at 9 o'clock in the morning with game day on ESPNU. Then they switch over to ESPN at 10 o'clock. I mean, glue yourself to the couch starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Look, if you're not watching game day at 9 to start your day, you're not ready for college football. Of course, you got Bama, Penn State's going to cap it all off. Ohio State, Miami, Oklahoma, Florida State. And this one is shaping up as a dandy, the rivalry between Marshall and West Virginia. Anderson with time, going downfield, airing it out, and completing it to Aaron Dobson. How about this? Aaron Dobson, 96 yards. <laughs> This is man coverage. It gets tipped right away. Brian Anderson sees the corner showing man coverage. He knows there's no safety in the middle, and he leaves Dotson there. How about this atmosphere here at Marshall, and what a difference a week makes. 
Moments to go. Marshall's offense going deep. But Tess, you know, right now they know they've got single coverage out there. Brian Anderson sees the corner laying to the inside, knows there's not a safety in the middle who's playing the other guy in the slot, knows that his guy can get to the middle, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. So all he has to do is lay it up there and let his big receiver, Dotson, go get it. If you're going to play man coverage, you've got to disguise. You don't want to tip it, at least not that early. Warner's kick. Austin. To the 29. All right, our Friday night fantasy football. Each week we pick a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, all from different conferences. Here's the results from week one. I went for 108 points. Had a good week out of uh, yeah. Kendall Hunter. To yeah, say you were least. on fire. You were on fire. I was struggling a little bit here. Uh, but, you know, I always start off kind of slowly. Landry Jones did not have the kind of game I expected. But our buddy, Colin, Colin Coward. Coward. ESPN you know. Radio's Colin Coward will be joining us all year long on Friday Fantasy Football. Yeah, I poor got, game out of Jeff Mail, but they yeah. were up by 70 points. Yeah, he's passing the ball. He's a big football fan, but I'm going to have to call him out, you know. He and I, we both have to step it up a little bit to catch you. Well, this week's picks in a moment. Geno Smith on first down. Smith to pass. Pressured right up the middle. Then releases it to Devine. Devine tries to make extra yardage. Taken down at the 35. All right, Rod, let's go through this week's picks in Friday fantasy football. You can lead the way, my friend. Uh, well, I was trying to be really conservative this week and get back to my winning ways. And I, I, I've got a quarterback in Texas Tech that's going to get me some points this week. Mr. Potts. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, the system, yep. I mean, it's just going to roll yep. it up for you. And I've got John Clay. At Wisconsin, I think the Spartans are in trouble. He's going to run all over him. And De uh, Demarius Johnson, Tulsa, is my wide receiver all-purpose guy. I cannot believe you picked him. <laughs> Flags come down. <laughs> Let's get the call here, and then we will put up our picks. Ball start. 64 on the offense. I heard penalty. Second down. So you're killing me with Damaris Johnson. He's going up against Bowling Green. That's exactly who I scouted as well. Uh, okay. But I'm going Gerard Johnson at Texas A&M. Montel Harris against Kent State. Boston College is Montel Harris. Colin likes Colin. Colin likes Colin Kaepernick. Uh, and Sean Vereen at Cal. That's a good pick against the Colorado defense. Vereen could go for big numbers. So backed up to a second and nine. Smith. Pressured, sprinting to the far side and overthrows Sanders. Yes. I'm sure there's some college fantasy football players that were hoping they had Aaron Dobson. He just went for 96 yards and now 14 to three. They didn't put that there for Colin. Are you this sure? is herd country right are you here. Sure? Thundering herd and they are thundering in the crowd right now. Up 14-3 on their in-state rival. Number 23, West Virginia, getting a good taste of this team playing at its best. You, you sense a little panic in the West Virginia offense because I do. I, you know, they're not going with their quick screens and the like. They're running for their life back there in the pocket. A little bit out of sync right now. I sense a galvanized front four defense of Marshall. Now the screen to Devine. He's dangerous in a spot like this. Devine, stiff arm, first down. And Tess, that's what I was getting at. They were out of sync. This is a team that believes in stretching you and then going with the various screens. Screen to the back, wide receiver screens. And they were a little bit out of sync. Now they're trying to get back to what they do best, their own personality. 14-3 Marshall. Of course, got a double dip of Friday Night Football. UTEP at Houston. Case Keenum in that powerful offense will be on after us. Smith looking downfield. Starks incomplete. Rashad Jackson had coverage on Brad Starks. Rashad Jackson, the son of former NFL star Ricky Jackson, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame this summer. Starks came off the field kind of holding that left shoulder. Well, Starks is one of their few big targets. We talked about all these undersized speed slot receiver types. He goes 6'3". Second and 10 now for Smith. 
unable to escape the pressure of Vinnie Curry. The best defensive lineman for Marshall takes down Geno Smith. Now take a look at the left side of your screen. There comes the pressure. You'll see him. That's Curry. He's one of the guys we talked about. Athletic quick poses the problem up front. And Tess, we heard all week long, Marshall felt good about that defensive line matching up with West Virginia's offensive line. And Coach Rip, defensive coordinator Chris Rippon, he said that's the one advantage I will tell you that we have. Our defensive front against their offensive line. Third and 15. Pressure again. Mario Harvey tears down Geno Smith. And the thundering herd is on fire here. And Harvey has already had a great game. And last play, we saw the pressure from the bottom of the screen. Look to the top of the screen. There are 30. He's just way too quick for the lineman. He just runs right by. It looked like it was Barkley over there. Yeah, Don Barkley lost his helmet. This Marshall team so pumped up. Up 11, their home debut, a new coach, and new life here against West Virginia. And this punt settles in only at about the 39. Mario Harvey, the senior from Georgia, he is pumped up. And why not? 14-3 heard. debut and how about this Marshall defense looking good against a very talented West Virginia offense yeah they've really stepped it up tonight a lot of pressure on the quarterback 45 points allowed allowed last week only three so far tonight and that defensive line has just been outstanding Anderson keeps it himself and he goes nowhere lost about a half a yard as Scooter Berry and Najee Good collapsed on him. There is Chris Rippon, Coach Rip. Flag is down. Came in late. We'll get the call here. Defensive coordinator for Marshall. He's got things going his way. You know, he had an interesting comment yesterday. He said the margin of error is small for us against this caliber of an offense in West Virginia. Well, he's got, you know, a couple of good players. Personal foul. Number two on the defense. That's Robert Sands, and that's the look of a coach that's mighty stressed. Well, Sands was engaged with uh, Smith, the tight end, in a little post-play altercation. Probably a little frustration because Smith is a big tight end, a big blocker, and that was the problem. He goes about 6'6", 267, and he, he was getting a little bit of the better of Sands on that play. Smith is the guy you want walking off the bus first if you're Marshall. And last. Anderson steps in, looks downfield, L, and he just tried to get it into that pocket to Ontavius Wilson, and a flag comes in at the end with that hit. Terrence Garvin had coverage, and they're going to get docked again here. Well, it's a point of emphasis. Protecting players, safety, defenseless players, blows to the head, upper body, those are the things. Personal foul, 28 on the defense. Targeting, 15 yard penalty, first down. Terrence Garvin. He went above the shoulder. Now, it doesn't have to be to the helmet. Listen in. So a couple of penalties. Ball comes loose. Anderson was trying to release it to the near side, and the ball came loose.
That's a fumble. I mean, that's not an incomplete pass. That's, that's a, a fumble. That's a loss of three. Yeah, he's lucky to get on top of that. And Tess, I want to go back to that that issue about the penalty. It is really a point of emphasis. It's not a head-to-head -head contact. It's not hitting the helmet. It's when you go above the shoulders, shoulders are above, they are talking about safety and protecting players, and you'll be flat. You know, that's a great point. They discussed that with us, the officials did in the preseason. It's not helmet to helmet. It's the defenseless and up high is what'll get you. Booker. And he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. He's forced out all the way back at the 37. This is what we're talking about. This is a hit up high, and the bottom of the helmet actually gets the backside of the helmet. But when you are at the shoulders or above, that's an issue. And early in the season, you're going to see a lot of flags on this because it's a safety issue. That is a point of emphasis from the officials in college football this year. But the defense has sent Marshall back since that point. So it's third and 16. They need to get to the 21. Anderson floats it out. And it is overthrown. He was trying to get it to Andre Booker, who was coming out of the backfield. The pressure came from Sidney Glover. Thomas on the coverage for the Mountaineers. So the West Virginia defense responds after the two penalties. Whitehead in punt formation for the herd. Case Whitehead comes on to punt. Brandon Hogan will put his heels back on the 10 yard line. And as you know, Whitehead will try to just settle this in there, get it directional and close to that goal line. And it worked out pretty good, didn't it? Marshall's got everything going their way. 14-3, possible upset brewing. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the Capital One Cup. Log on to ESPN.com slash Capital One Cup to vote for the Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week. That's the Memorial Student Center fountain here at Marshall, dedicated in memory of the plane crash victims back in 1972. Of course, this year, the 40th anniversary of the fatal plane crash that took the lives of the 1970 Marshall football team. So the punt was down at the three-yard line. And now West Virginia backed up Smith to pass from his own end zone, just escapes and gets good yardage out to the 12 yard line. That was a heady play by Geno Smith. The pressure came from James Rouse, but Smith was able to get around it. Well, he's got great pocket presence, but you know something? They've got issues. They're having a hard time protecting Geno Smith. And you see the pressure that time coming from the right side, James Rouse. Smith was able to slip it, but there is a big problem. Quickness and speed on the edge is an issue for the West Virginia tackles. It's not often you see a true freshman starting on a defensive line at this level of football, but they love Rouse. Brian Clark. spot this just short of that line to make so it is third and less than one now this crowd is totally into this well this is a big field position play right here no doubt can they get the first down or will they be punting over to Marshall or will be settling in at midfield? Well, that's the closed end of the stadium. It should be a lot louder, a little tougher for Geno Smith. So a timeout called here on third and one. 
Vinny Curry in that Marshall defense. They've done the job well, and the Marshall offense has had a couple big plays. 55-yard run, then capped by that eight-yard touchdown pass, and then this, 96 yards to Aaron Dobson. Yeah, Anderson has been really on top of things, as has that defensive line. Vinny Curry has been in the backfield. Mario Harvey's been in the backfield. Everyone has been getting back there, wreaking havoc. Curry, Harvey leading the way. It's been a real tough deal for those guys. Harvey, I tell you, six feet tall, 250 pounds, about a 4 3 5 40 on that guy. Lateral quickness. He's rushing the quarterback, and they can't block him. He's too quick. He's one of those hidden gems that could be playing at any oh, level, yeah. any, anywhere in the country. Absolutely. And he's right here in Marshall. He's put together a great career. Third and one. First down and a lot more. Ryan Clark finally ridden down by Mario Harvey and West Virginia needed that 23 yard run on third and short from Clark. See, that's the dimension he can give them even at his size. He can get downfield a bit. Well, West Virginia has got to get their big three the little three guys involved. They got to get more touches to it. Smith keeps it himself and dives ahead to the 39. Yeah, so under four minutes to go, Rod, you really look at this game and momentum's been on Marshall's side. And here is that group. Yeah, touches. Devine has gotten his share, but Sanders only one touch, Austin only three. And these guys really have to have more touches. The goal for West Virginia is probably to get Sanders 10 to 15. 10 to 15 for Austin as well. And Marshall was quick to recognize that their cornerbacks are really, you know, not the strong suit of their defense. So having Sanders and Austin play a big role, you'd think that would be critical for West Virginia. Smith, plenty of time. And he overthrew and to the outside. He was looking for Tavon Austin. And Marshall's doing a great job of changing up defensively who they really focus on. On one play, it'll be a double coverage or rotating their coverage towards Austin. On another play, they do it towards Sanders. But they're trying to take away one of those guys all the time and make Smith guess where to go with the football. Timeout Marshall. With a timeout, let's check in with Reese Davis in studio for a look at what's coming up on the Olive Garden Halftime Report. All right, Joe, coming up on that Olive Garden Halftime Report, the latest news on Mark Ingram. Maybe you don't want to count the Heisman Trophy winner out just yet when Alabama plays Penn State tomorrow night. We'll have Mark and Lou stop by with a little take your pick for a monster Saturday that's coming up. And Todd McShay will tell you a player that you need to keep your eye on this weekend. It's all coming up on the Olive Garden Halftime Report just as soon as you guys finish up the first half. Thanks, Reese. Well, you can, of course, tune in, see what the guys have to say at halftime. Then tomorrow morning on ESPNU at 9 a.m., they will have the latest on what's going on with Alabama and Penn State. I'm looking forward to that Todd McShay film study, his breakdown on quarterback Steven Garcia. I mean, we get the, the benefit of talking to McShay and seeing his work all week long. You get a chance to see him do breakdown, his scouting stuff, excellent. South Carolina. NASCAR Street Cup Series at Richmond tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Third and five, four receivers for Smith. Here comes the pressure right up the middle. And he has to complete the Sanders. He's looking for the yardage, and he's going to be short. Brown and Shakur surrounded Sanders. And that's what we were talking about, that double coverage, figuring out which guys to double. And that was Brown and Shakur that time doubling up outside. So Geno Smith struts off. They improved the field position, but that was a drive that they were trying to cut into this margin. 
Instead, Greg Pugnetti, Troy Evans on here for special teams. This will be Evans calling for the fair catch. And he does so at the 11-yard line. Saturday afternoon, ABC ESPN2 regional matchup. Christian Ponder, the Seminoles, ranked number 17. Oklahoma trying to bounce back after what was a tough opening week against Utah State. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ABC or ESPN2 at 3.30. You can go to ESPN.com and search maps if you're interested in finding the game that you will see. Of course, you can always go online to ESPN3.com and you'll find just about every game under the sun. We're talking about national title game rematches tomorrow. Three of those games, big time things. Former Sugar Bowl, Orange Bowl, Fiesta Bowl participants. Big time stuff. There's old Miami players actually calling up current Kane saying you got to get revenge tomorrow against Ohio State after that 2002 season, the 03 Fiesta Bowl. They've been leaving notes for those current Canes saying, get them. Oh, man. How about, how about Oklahoma's defense? You and I were talking about that all week and what Utah State and Burrell did at quarterback to them. You know, people need to wake up to the fact that with the scholarship reductions, the proliferation of the yep. game, that there are special players at some of these schools that you wouldn't think. And DeAndre Burrell mm -hmm. at Utah State is as athletic and good of a dual threat star as there is. He's a dangerous, dangerous player. Yeah, before scholarship limits, that guy would be somewhere else seen every Saturday. He's a great player, and Oklahoma found out last weekend. Hey, that was a good opening weekend by the WAC. Fresno with the win over Cincy. Utah yep. State taking Oklahoma down to the wire, and of course, Boise doing what they did on Monday night. So Marshall is going to take a timeout here. Doc Holliday, first-year head coach. He's a fiery one. He's waited a long time for this opportunity to be a head man, a longtime West Virginia assistant, and of course, was at Florida when they were on top of the college football world a couple of years ago. I love what he told us yesterday. It's all about relationships in football. That's why he's such a great recruiter, and the players who have played for him, gone on to the NFL, continue to be involved with him, really focused on him. He loves relationships with those guys, and you see, He's really committed to this area. He's got a lot of ties to West Virginia. He does indeed, and there has been a few things written recently about his relationship with West Virginia because he was a top contender to land that job, the job that Bill Stewart was given. I'll tell you, Colin Dunlap in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette wrote an article this morning Great where he yep. detailed the relationship between Stewart and Holiday, and it's not quite what it was made out to be this week. Not as uh, all peaches and cream as you might think. But two gentlemen, but there have been a few speed bumps over the course of the past few months, we will say. Robert Sands on the tackle of Martin Ward. There is Bill Stewart, potentially the most likable guy in all of college football. Just a avuncular character, Bill Stewart, his third year. Doc Holliday was on his staff. Let's come over here cross state to Marshall. Well, people forget Bill Stewart won that head coaching job by winning that Fiesta Bowl. I mean, he was the interim head coach when Rich Rodriguez went on to Michigan, and he stepped in and got that big vic victory. Yeah, he was named the new coach the uh, day after beating Oklahoma 48 to 28. Third and six now. And Ward. He's going to come up a couple yards short of the line to make as JT Thomas came in on the tackle as the clock continues to tick down here in what is as good of a first half as Marshall could have ever hoped for. Well, they felt strongly that their defensive line would be superior to West Virginia's offensive line. And it has been. I mean, they have put Geno Smith in hot water the entire first half. And that's been the difference in this ball game, oh, along with a couple of big pass plays. And some solid defense like this guy, Mario Harvey, with 11 tackles in the first half. Great defense, big play offense, the 96-yarder to Dobson. 14 to three at the half against number 23. Now, let's join Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May back in the studio for the Olive Garden Halftime Report. Doc 
Doc Holliday getting ready for the second half. His Marshall Thundering Herd are up 14 to 3. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you. A lot of people didn't see this one coming. Number 23 with all that speed, yeah. the maturity, the senior players on offense at the skill position, but Marshall has come to play. Yeah, who knew their defense would show up the way they did tonight after the way Ohio State ran all over them last week. They played big time in the first half, and then their offense got it going too. Game track is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Well, Doc Holliday inspired his team, got them emotionally ready, and they responded with some big plays. First, there was the eight-yard touchdown pass. Dontavious Wilson from Brian Anderson. Then he connected deep with his wide receiver, Aaron ba Dobson. Dobson got into the end zone, or did he? And then it was all about the defense. Mario Harvey, the star of the first half, with 11 tackles, a couple of pressures, and a sack of Geno Smith. He led that defense that really got everything going for, for Marshall in the first half. We will take a closer look at that Dobson 96-yard touchdown. We were doing our own little video investigation at halftime. Wait do you see what we came up with. Austin and Sanders back deep. And this is Austin. Tavon Austin. They could use a big return. And Austin is set to give it to them. Austin crosses midfield for the Mountaineers. Now let's go back to the 96-yard touchdown in the first half. A flag is down here. <laughs> And watch Dobson before the goal line. Yeah, does he lose this ball before he crosses the goal line? Personal foul, right down out of bounds, 37 on the kicking team, 15 yard penalty, first down. So West Virginia will be 15 more ahead here, but look at Dobson here on the 96 yard touchdown. And Tess, this ball appears to be out before he crosses the goal line. He celebrates prematurely. The ball goes out of the end zone and arguably, if that had been spotted, that's a touchback, not a touchdown. Listen, at real speed, Dobson was flying down the field. He brought his momentum through the end zone, but when you go back and you look at that replay, and I'm not saying it's indisputable video evidence because you don't have the goal line angle, but it's clear to see there at that angle that he starts celebrating just prior to the goal line. Nonetheless, 14-3, and the Mountaineers need something here. They go with Devine to open things up down to the 28, and Vinny Curry scoops it right up. How about that? Curry caused it. Donald Brown jumped on it. Curry was in on that play, and Brown was smart to get on top of it. But did the ball come out on contact, or did it come out when he hit the ground? There's the hit. There's the ball pushed out. That looks like that's Vinny Curry who knocks the ball out. That is a fumble. That ball came out before he got to the ground. It was a stripping by Curry. It was laying right on Curry's chest, and then Brown came in and secured it. So West Virginia, who you talk about, hey, they're getting the ball first. They got the big return. They got the penalty. They're going to their main man. It falls apart right away. Booker now. Here is Andre Booker. And Booker is out for a good gainer to the 39-yard line, chipped down by Sidney Glover. Well, they caught West Virginia bringing pressure from the left side, and that option got outside of the pressure. That's how they were able to pick up a first down. Just one of those nights for Bill Stewart and the Mountaineers. Brian Anderson out of the gun now. Three receivers to the top. He looks to Walker, and that is incomplete. You know, Tess, we've talked about how in this history of this game, the last few years, West Virginia has been behind at halftime, but they've played well in the second half. So they've been in this spot before. Four-point margin a year ago, seven-point margin, but here it is 14-3, to three, and Doc Holliday has this herd fired up. Fumble on West Virginia's opening drive of this second half. And now Marshall on second and ten. Walker. Unable to get much yardage there. 17 is Walker, the ball carrier. Now, imagine this start to the season for the Big East if West Virginia 
loses tonight. They had a rough opening week last, last week with Pitt losing, Cincinnati losing, and now West Virginia, a team that many people thought could wind up being a conference champ, is struggling tonight with Marshall. A Marshall team that was in complete disarray a week ago, losing 45-7 to to Ohio State. Third and eight. Anderson steps up. Now gets it to Smith, the big tight end, and he tries to fight for that extra yardage. Looks like he's going to be marked just short of the line to make as Ian Smith and Pat Miller were quick to get to Lee Smith. Oh, what a great job by Smith and Miller. I mean, you're talking about a six foot six inch, 270 pound tight end, and they stopped in cold, cold, when he only had to pick up one more yard for the first down. Midfield, short yardage, special teams. You're an underdog with the lead. You got to be careful if you're the punt defense here. Special teams for West Virginia. Right-headed punt formation. Hogan back at his 10 to return. Whitehead gets off a good boot. And it just hits inside the goal line for a touchback. Coming up next, we are going to storm the dorm. <laughs> the Marshall Maniacs enjoying that score, 14-3. It is time to storm the dorm each week, our chance to uncover on-campus atmosphere and traditions. Today, we visit freshman North Hall here at Marshall. Here we are at Marshall University, named after the great Chief Justice John Marshall. Now, John Marshall used to play a little game called Coits. It's actually a lot like horseshoes, except it's played with the ring. In fact, it's the ancestor to horseshoes. And they are very serious about their Coits, as you can see, Rod. In fact, they have a tournament which concludes next Thursday with the President's Challenge of Coits. Oh, come on, you got to make one of those. We should have gone out there and tossed those things around. What? They can't be that heavy, are they? That was John Marshall's favorite game. He was the fourth Chief Justice of the United States. West Virginia back on offense now. Devine trying to get to the outside, straightens out and is pushed out just past the 30. A flag comes in late there. Omar Brown got to Noel Devine. Uh, clearly, safety is the issue. Personal foul, 31 on the defense. Unnecessary roughness, 15-yard penalty, first down. When you hit guys out of bounds, there's a lot of stuff on the sidelines. A guy can get injured, and they are going to protect players in that situation. Out of bounds, done, over. Why are you taking the extra effort? Completely unnecessary to then flip them up yep. from the legs. Yep, totally unnecessary. And that's coming from a team captain in Omar Brown. Maybe not for long. So West Virginia trying to get something going. Geno Smith to Bailey inside the 35. Rashad Jackson had coverage of Stedman Bailey. He was one of Geno Smith's high school teammates. Bailey was working on Jackson over there. Size advantage. Decent coverage. Ball thrown where it needed to be. But Rashad Jackson wasn't able to make the play. So West Virginia moving well here. Jackson showing pressure off the edge. Now backs off to get back to covering Austin. Play clock running down. Smith looking for Austin and overthrew it to his outside. Tavon Austin's just five foot nine. They need to get Austin and Sanders more involved. Did you see the way Omar Brown held up at the end there? Learned his lesson. Didn't Learned he? your lesson. Yeah, yeah. You don't take that shot anymore. Smart play. That, you know, players catch on. We throw enough flags. We, we get it. Divine flanking Smith and now moving into position to carry the ball and here he goes straight up the middle Noel Devine and a first down for the Mountaineers to the 16 yard line Jackson 
was able to get to him. Good block by the center, Joe Madsen. Yeah, Madsen, great job up front, and then Devine, very explosive, but you just have to watch Madsen up front. He's fantastic. Smith, Devine out of the backfield, and he is taken down at the 15-yard line by Devin Arrington. You know, we're talking about Madsen and that great block he had before. This is his 15th straight start. Veteran guy, great center, directs all the traffic up front. And an offensive line that struggled in the first half against that front four of Marshall. Smith changing things up. Three receivers to the far side. Devine in the backfield with him out of the gun. Marshall showing some pressure off the edge. They come inside handoff, but Devine could not get his feet underneath him. He stumbled right out of the gate. It'll make for a third and long. And you know, Tess, they're still having trouble freeing up Sanders or Tavon Austin outside. They can't seem to figure out where the double coverage is coming from and go to the other guy. They've got to get more touches to Sanders and Austin. They're in the slots here. Split. Four receivers for Smith on third and nine. And he throws it low and incomplete to Bailey. <laughs> Coach Bill Stewart. He has seen his offense struggle against the upset-minded Marshall team. Tyler Bittencourt coming on to attempt this 33-yarder. He made from 34 earlier. And once again, Bittencourt showing you what he's made of. Bill Stewart needs a little more though. Marshall still on top. Now, Old Main's herd is up 14 to 6. So far this season, there have been ranked teams to fall. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Virginia Tech, it was against Boise, Pittsburgh sure. against a good Utah team, North Carolina, LSU, and Oregon State against uh, a rock solid TCU national contending team. This is a Marshall team that was blown out in week one for number 23. Here's Andre Booker. What do you make of that, Rod? Well, first thing tells me Ohio State is something. I mean, Ohio State really shut this team down, which is why I'm looking forward to seeing that Ohio State game tomorrow against Miami. I think Ohio State defensively is a lot faster than people really, truly understand. Secondly, I think this Marshall team, you know, is one of those teams that has gotten better from week one. And you're going to see a lot of that tomorrow. You're never as bad or as good as that last game. Aaron Chrisley, Kirk, and Desmond are going to get you set for that Ohio State-Miami game starting on game day on ESPNU at 9 a.m. Huge day, monster Saturday tomorrow. Could be a freaky Friday here if this score holds up. Anderson downfield to a wide open Ontavius Wilson. Now, Wilson had the big play in the first half that's going to have some West Virginia people up in arms as we showed a video replay where he may have started celebrating too early. Here he just hauls in one wide open. Yeah, and, and he doesn't quite have the arm strength to get the ball down the field the same way you might like to see, but he does get it to the right guy. But that oh, did not that look like a catch. That looked like that was trapped. Well, Wilson's just uh, surrounded by controversy tonight, but this <laughs> will be replayed Please unlike his earlier one. Review. So let's see here as we will take a look with them as Doc Holliday watches on. Did it hit the ground, Rob? Well, from that first angle, it looked like it got to the ground, and it certainly looked that way there. And you want to have your hands underneath the ball to have the catch, but that slips through the hands. You see the ball on the ground, and then he rolls over with it. To me, that is absolutely an incomplete pass. You've got to cradle it. You've got to protect the ball from hitting the ground. Once again, the call on the field is a completion, and they're looking for that indisputable video evidence, which it appears you would think that they would have here. Yeah, Bill Stewart thinks that way, at least. Yeah. Well, and the officials have told us every week, it means it's got to jump out at you that you need to change the call. That jumps out at me as you got to change the call. I 
I'm taking your silence as agreement. You know, I misspoke. It was Wilson who had the eight-yard touchdown. It was Dobson who had the 96-yarder earlier, but the uh, that was never reviewed. I do think that these reviews have taken a bit longer than most fans would like and most players would like. A lot, lot of standing around out there. Well, it's overturned. It's going to be second and 10 at Marshall's own 27. Wilson, the leading receiver last year for Marshall. Well, these things just have to go a little faster. Especially on a play yeah, like this. This has got to go faster. I mean, that's ball on ground through the arms. I mean, to me, that is indisputable video evidence. And the chant of We Are Marshall carries through this replay time. Of course, the title of the great film this year, the 40th anniversary of that fatal plane crash that the film was based on. They have a lot. After review, it's determined the pass is incomplete. <laughs> be second down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Well, they got that one right, and the officials are telling us that they had a bit of technical problems. And as for the delay in getting that replay call. You know, you mentioned that We Are Marshall film. I, I think the football community knew and understood the story, but I think the benefit of that film coming out was that the broader population came to hear and understand the Marshall story. Mary Jane Tolley, the widow of the head coach of that team, was here tonight for the opening coin toss, an emotional moment. First game she has returned to in 40 years and what a night it would be for all the Marshall faithful if they were able to the first time ever defeat their in-state rival big brother West Virginia a ranked West Virginia team with grand expectations for their biggie season ahead so it backs them up to a second and ten with the incompletion as Ward is with Anderson in the backfield Evans now Brandon Hogan with the tackle of Troy Evans. Now, we're not going to confuse Anderson with Byron Leftwich, Chad Pennington, you know, those great guys, great quarterbacks that played here. But he's doing a very effective job, smart job, going to the right place with the football, playing a very management-appropriate game. They have a true freshman quarterback named Eddie Sullivan, who they were targeting for playing time tonight, and a lot of folks think is the future of the program. But Anderson has managed this game. Let's see what he can do now on third and nine. Pressure coming after him. Gets it complete, but going to be tackled down at the 30-yard line is Aaron Dobson by Brandon Hogan. Well, Hogan and his mates have been making clean tackles, no yards after the catch. Getting off the field. Now, the West Virginia offense has to be hardened by what the defense has done. We haven't heard much out of the West, uh, out of the Marshall offense in quite a while now. Ace Whitehead to punt. And there are the star offensive players who need to play like stars for West Virginia when they get this ball back. Jock Sanders set to return. Check that. It's Hogan who lets it bounce. And they have it at the 33 down there. West Virginia down eight when we return. We'll be tuning in, Reese. College game day, 9 o'clock on ESPNU. It gets underway. 14 to 6, number 23 trails. See, they're, they're smart there. here. There it is. They know. Watch college game day on ESPNU. One of the 41,382 here, a new record. Here is Sanders. And he scoots out for first down yardage. Sanders. Jock Sanders. They need to get him more involved in this second half. We've talked about that, and they're going to hurry things up. Maybe that'll be the answer. Changing the tempo. He defends the boy Divine now. And he is ridden down at the 47-yard line. Well, you mentioned it, Tess. You, you talked about 
the need to get the ball to Sanders, get him back involved. He only touched the ball a couple times. He's a big play guy. He and Devine came back. They said no to the NFL. They were going to be third or fourth round picks. They came back for their senior year. Smith keeps it himself on second down. It'll bring up a third and two. So the big three in this offense. Yeah, it's not working here. You got the right touches for Devine, but only three for Sanders and three for Austin. And Sanders and Austin are the wide guys, and they're getting doubled from time to time, and they're not finding them. They got to move them around. They're in the slot, but they got to move them to get them away from the rotating double coverage so that they're free to do some things. Third and two and out of the gun. Devine, the first down, and dives ahead close to the 40-yard line. Omar Brown got a piece of his leg. Of course, Noel Devine has been the key to this offense for the past few years. See when he goes over 100 yards what the mark is. I'm impressed with his toughness. And that is incomplete. Threw it to the inside for Jock Sanders. Monster Saturday on ESPN, 3.30 Eastern. Ja'Cory Harris in Miami going up against Terrell Pryor and the Buckeyes. Then at 7 o'clock, Kirk and Brent going to have a good one. Joe Paterno and Nick Saban. Penn State, Alabama. College football on ESPN Saturday. You can get it online on your phone. And we're going to be bringing you that Miami-Ohio State game in amazing 3D. Tim Brown and I will have the call up in Columbus. Second and 10. Sanders drops it. Had him in space, and he dropped it. What a matchup tomorrow. Yeah, and I think this is a huge matchup. If Terrell Pryor has a great game, I think he jumps to the top of that Heisman list because he'll build on what he did in that Rose Bowl. To Corey Harris has a chance to really show that he can play on the road in a big game and get something done. Third and 10 now. They need to get to the 30. Pressure comes in. They set it up for Devine. Put down. Well short. Donald Brown came up and made a good play on Noel Devine. Oh, my goodness. You just don't make tackles like that in open space one-on-one -on -one with Noel Devine. They say Brown is the most energetic defender they have. He came after it that time. Oh, watch this. He waits until the very end to throw his arms for this tackle. He sizes him up. He gets in grip position, and now he throws to the legs. That's a great job, and he gave Noel Devine nowhere to cut back on him. Great, great angle he took to him. That's a great play. And this punt goes out at the six. Of course, Saturday afternoon, college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, ABC, ESPN2, the regional matchups. And this is a good one. You got Florida State and Oklahoma or Iowa State, Iowa. You can just go to ESPN.com and search maps if you want to find the game in your area. Florida State and Oklahoma. And you look at how Oklahoma played against Utah State. They need to wake up because that Knowles offense, they can move the ball with Christian Ponder. Ponder had a big game last week. It's a pass now. Walker. And Walker is ripped down by Sidney Glover. I'm able to get it to the seven. You know, Marshall's been sitting on that lead. They had all that momentum in the first half, but, you know, even with as good as things have gone, yep. this is still a one-possession yep. game, yep. and right now they're in a hole with a field position rod. Yeah, it's been a methodical approach by West Virginia to slowly get back in this ball game. And a stop here would put them in great position with a short field on, on the offensive end. Ward. Fighting for yardage out to the 10-yard line. Uh, Jay Good taking down Martin Ward. 
Remember, he had that big run early that set up their first touchdown of the night that went to Ontavius Wilson. You see that West Virginia has had opportunity. They've had the football for a lot more time than Marshall. They've run more plays. They just haven't pushed it in the end zone because of big plays by the Marshall defense. Remember, they had that big, long drive. Let's see what's happening with the play clock here. Well, they had the fourth down stop. Fourth down stop after that long drive. A couple of big sacks. Play clock to Thank you. Thank you. And then coming up with just a couple of field goals rather than touchdowns and on about subsequent drives. The Vinnie Curry fumble that he caused, and they got the recovery. Marshall 0 for 5 in their last five attempts on third down. And that falls incomplete, and you can make it 0 for 6. They were looking for Lee Smith. Najee Good had coverage, and the West Virginia defense did a good job there, and now Marshall will be punting from their own end zone. Josh Sanders back at his 41. Case Whitehead needs to get off a good boot here. Sanders calls for the fair catch right at midfield. Let's look back at that controversial play in real time brought to you by Wendy's. This was Aaron Dobson, a 96-yard pass, but watch this. His celebration started a little early. Now, in real time, maybe you couldn't see it, but you slow it down and you tell me. Yeah, it, from that angle, in slow motion, it looks like not only did he celebrate a little early, the ball came out, goes out of the end zone, and should have been a touchback had that been called. But I'll tell you, in real time, very hard to judge that. Noel Devine right up the middle for first down yardage. The speed he was running at, the officials obviously, and everybody running from behind. Yep. You watch it the first time through in real time, and you say, yeah, no doubt, touchdown but you slow it down there'll be some West Virginia folks on the internet chirping about that one for coaches a while. across the country are gonna tell their guys no need yep. uh, don't so into the end zone now here goes Devine just taken down by a foot as Omar Brown reached up and got one of those cleats we saw Devine last season on a bad ankle carry this offense 25 28 carries in a couple of ball games you wouldn't think that a guy his size can handle that but he's incredibly strong incredibly durable west virginia hurrying things up here and it's worked out well ball up in the air and it drops down they were trying to get it to Tavon austin and it hung in the air for a while Just a screen pass thrown a little bit hard. Oh. Austin look his, took his hands off a little bit, and James Rouse had a shot at it, but he's a defensive lineman. Come on, you can't expect him to pluck that out of the air. So third and one. Here comes the power formation. Linda Mood and Clark. Clark, it'll depend on the spot, but they penetrated that line well as Michael Janik and Vinnie Curry got low and got to Clark. Well, Janik certainly playing with a lot of enthusiasm. Watch him come off the right side, inside, and makes a great play. A lot of quickness from Janik, number 90, from that right side. Short yardage defense has been solid for Marshall tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And now you got a fourth down here. If, if you're short here, you got a question. Do you kick it? Now, I've got this rule. You know, you're short, and the way you're playing, get some points, keep going. If well, you can't you. make it on third and short, I, I'm not confident you can make it on fourth and short. And you got Tyler Bittencourt as your yeah. place kicker, who is as clutch of a kicker as there is. This guy's got nearly flawless technique, yeah. sort of like a golf swing with yeah. his confidence. See, you, if you get three points here, you just keep 
pounding, you keep cutting away at the lead, you keep getting back and extending the game. If you miss it here, you know, you're still in the third quarter, you give them an emotional lift right here. Ah, they agree. Yep, Stewart agrees. I think that's the right call. This is a 45-yard attempt. He's been good tonight, two for two from 34 and 33. Here's Bittencourt. It is blocked. Marshall blocks it. Donald Brown scooped it up, and special teams comes up big for the Thundering Herd. The kind of stuff that happens sometimes on a night when upsets are lined up. Early in the season, special teams issues inside. Big push. They just crumble. Look at all of that effort inside to knock this down. Just a poor job up front. Jones, Johnny Jones, 91, looked like he was the guy who got his hand on it, but a tremendous push across the board inside. Yeah, big six foot five, 300 pounder Johnny Jones, and he got that push. Anderson downfield and he gets it complete to Courtney Edmondson. What a turnaround. West Virginia was marching the field goal attempt and now all of a sudden one play later and Marshall is knocking on the door here. And West Virginia is looking like a boxer on the ropes right now. They were staggered and stumbling back here. Motion. Left side of that line was anxious to get on their defenders. The line of the boy. Ball start. 68 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Wow, what what a game tonight. What a way to kick off the weekend. We had that Mississippi State. Auburn game last night. Terrific one here tonight. And then monster Saturday tomorrow. Told you there have been some preseason ranked teams that took an L in week one, but they were all against quality programs. Not a program that's rebuilding with a new coach coming off a blowout loss. This would be something if Marshall can capitalize. Edmondson. Incomplete. Edmondson's pass. Official right on the spot believed he was out of bounds. Didn't get the foot down. Catch out. Great call. You see the official top of the screen right on the money, right on the sideline. He's got the perfect view of this and is easily able to make that call. Couldn't stab the front foot and couldn't drag the toe of the back foot. Remember, the penalty backed him up, so it's a second and 15. Booker in the backfield with Anderson. West Virginia bringing some heat right up the middle. Wide receiver screen now. And just inside the 35 is Ontavius Wilson. And things heating up. Ian Smith's helmet came off there. They don't want a 15-yarder at this point. Oh, no surprise. This is a in-state rivalry. Hey, Marshall has not knocked off West Virginia ever. Tenth meeting, West Virginia has won everyone in the series. Seven of the games have been played in Morgantown. Can you imagine what it would mean for these faithful here in Huntington to have this night go their way? Anderson. Lee Smith to his fingertips and a first down for Marshall. A test. He's got a mismatch in coverage. He's 6'7". Look at that size advantage and the soft hand. But the matchup was the one they needed. 18 yards on third and 11. And Brian Anderson is playing in control 
what they say put the ball in the right place at the right time that's what he just did making Pennington and Leftwich very proud Marshall alums who played the quarterback position here out, as Marshall, well as it can be played so Marshall is going to talk things over well Rod we got here Wednesday afternoon and there was a lot of discussion about the realities of where this program is with Doc Holliday right mm -hmm. He talked about the level of player they have in here. He talked about changing the culture. And he talked a lot about this being the 40th anniversary of the fatal plane crash yeah. of We Are Marshall. Somehow, some way tonight, all the pieces are coming together. Yeah, it, it's really something you could sense and feel. And I loved what he talked about, about when he got to the program, the first thing he did with the guys, he said, anybody who's won a championship, raise your hand. No one could. And he says, we've got to change what we've been doing here to get us back to where this program was in the late 90s. Here's what Doc had to say. It's hard for me to sit up here, but for, uh, for 25 years, <clears throat> Diane and I have worked for this opportunity. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I remember growing up in Hurricane there. I'm sorry, guys, but but uh, put my whole life into being a head football coach in Major University. You just don't help her out, I am to be your head football coach. That was the moment when he took the job. Grew up just 20 minutes away in Huracan, West Virginia. Spent majority of his professional career coaching for the Mountaineers. Now his rivals. Second and ten. Edmondson on the fly sweep to the 12-yard line. Anthony Leonard with the tackle, converging with Brandon Hogan, and the clock is ticking down here in this third quarter. Such a big play coming up. I would assume they will let this clock run out and then dial up the best play to get into the end zone. Smith, the tight end. Big matchup problem down here. Marshall is in control of things for the moment. The fourth quarter will be coming up. Could it be an upset here in this series? Stay with us. Three quarters, Marshall has done better. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessitore, and here's the big story of the night. West Virginia has never lost to the little in-state brother. Tenth game of the series. Marshall trying to pull off the upset against number 23. Third and six. First down, touchdown, Ontavius Wilson. His second of the night. C.J. Wood, the right guard is down, intending to that left leg. Well, Wood got out there and gave a great block, as did the tight end Lee Smith. They were the two key guys to give enough room for Wilson to get that touchdown. There's tremendous blocking on this screen. Watch the right side of the line. 75 is Wood. He's going to get out there, and 16 is Smith. Great blocks by both of them to create some lane, some room for Wilson. Without those blocks, Wilson does not get into the end zone as easily as he did. And Wood apparently was injured somewhat in getting out there down the field to make that block. Water 
Bill Stewart's group has a lot of work ahead of them with 1455 to go. Extra point is good, and number 23 is in a hole. Let's check in with Reese. RD. All right, Joe, you guys have a great finish going there. Great finish also over on ESPN2. Final dozen laps, NASCAR Nationwide Series. Kevin Harvick has four wins at Richmond, most among any driver in this race, and he has the lead. Final 12 laps going on over on ESPN2. Thanks, Reese. Reese is going to have that sit down with Joe Paterno tomorrow on game day. Of course, game day coverage starts on ESPNU at 9 a.m. But right now, the college football weekend is rocking here in Huntington. What a change for Brian Anderson against Ohio State. Tough against those Buckeyes. Tonight, three touchdowns, not an interception. Yeah, he's taken care of the football. And he's made great decisions, gone to the right place at the right time, playing against an Ohio State team. I tell you, that, that can make you look bad, too. Watching that defense on tape, it was clear that Ohio State had this special, special defense this year. Tavon Austin. And Austin is taken down at the 24. Well, the time has come, Rod, for West Virginia to get going offensively. They've moved the ball between the 20s. They have come up short, had the block field goal. They were stopped on a short fourth down. But time is of the essence now for Geno Smith. Well, they've got to protect Smith. And he's been harassed all night. No need to panic, but they just got to protect him. And to free up Sanders and Tavon's, uh, 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 Tavon, Tavon Austin, they've got to move him around. I, I think they got to get them away from that double coverage that they're rotating towards one of those guys. Smith with time. He gets it to Austin. And Austin has it out to the 47-yard line. Austin is the guy who they expect to be the breakout player this year. He's got all the flag skills is down by that. the way and it's coming back But well, watch the left side of your screen. We talked about protection. Look at the takedown now on Curry Curry is just tackled as he has a chance to get in there and make a play. Curry's been very effective. So it sets him back to a first and 20. Movement. Crowd's getting into it. Well, and the Marshall players are encouraging the crowd. They are. Full start, offense. Five yards, first down. Rod, they've been waiting a long time for this. The players weren't even lining up. They were trying to demand the crowd get louder. And now Devine can't hang on to that screen set up for him. They are totally out of sync, and it begins with everything up front. The defensive line of Marshall is just flat out whipping West Virginia up front, and it's thrown everything out of sync. Bullock and Thompson getting involved there in that front four. Second and 25. Low snap. Smith still on his feet. Now ball is loose and it is picked up but still pushed back is Sanders. Complete momentum with Marshall. They are swarming them and West Virginia is just stumbling around. Well, they are totally out of sync and again it is up front. 
with four guys. They are getting pressure. Mario Harvey is the guy who gets in and creates even more havoc. But with four guys, they create a lot of pressure. And there comes Harvey from the backside after he wasn't able to get the first lick in there. Third and 32. Devine tripped up. He just got to the four. Devin Arrington got a piece of Devine, and that was a great defensive series for Marshall. Remember, the holding call brought back a reception that was out to midfield, and Marshall took advantage. Not a lot of room back there for kicking this one out. Pognetti gets it off. Evans. And he returns it to the 41. 12.59 to go for Doc Holliday. Nine months ago, he was on the other sideline. And now the longtime West Virginia assistant stands opposite Bill Stewart, sizing up a big upset. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond is tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. They are after that chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Ten spots have been clinched. Booker. And Andre Booker now finding the going easy on the outside. For the confidence of Marshall as this game has gone on and that scoreboard has maintained itself and that goose egg in the all-time series could be going away. Can you imagine the emotional feeling, the impact? All these folks from Marshall are thinking and feeling, never having beaten West Virginia, and they can smell it, taste it. Ward. And not just the fact that it's Marshall, West Virginia, the fact that it's a ranked West Virginia team and a Marshall team that's coming off of a blowout loss to Ohio State with a new coach trying to just rebuild on the year that's the 40th anniversary of the fatal crash. Yeah, start a year line. filled with emotion yep. where the widow of the coach of that team came back to a college football game for the first time for the coin toss tonight. Evans now. And that clock continues to run down. This was pregame. Mary Jane Tolley. She's in the green there. The widow of the head coach of that 1970 team that was lost in the fatal plane crash. In the spirit of we are Marshall, reigning supreme tonight, can they hold on here? Can they seal this deal and pull off what would have to be marked down as one of the signature moments in this program's long history? Low snap, and Anderson does the smart thing and just falls on it with that 15-point lead and in the fourth quarter. And that may be the break that West Virginia needed. They cannot give up three points. They can't give up any score at this point. They have to keep the game where it is. A field goal by Marshall would end things. It would make it really tough on West Virginia. Tyler Warner, by the way, their place kicker, has a career long of only 37 yards. Yeah, you can't try and kick one here. Their best bet is to try and pin West Virginia down and give them a very long field. So Case Whitehead, the punter, steps out onto the field here. And just looking ahead, Tess, West Virginia gets the ball back. They have to move the pocket. Delay of game. The offense. Fire penalty. Fourth down. It would have been a 50-yard field goal for Warner, which is well outside of his range. So now they just push themselves back with Case Whitehead set to punt. Well, their defense has played stellar all night long, so the decision to just 
play the field position game not risk things made by Doc Holliday smart one I mean his defense has been outstanding his D line has been harassing Smith all night long straight up the middle Whitehead gets it off and can they down that Holding's going to go against Marshall here. You know, I think Doc Holliday saw that flag and thought maybe this was going to be a running in or roughing call. That penalty will be added to the end of the kick. This is the 20-yard line, so we'll have first and 10 on the 30. He was a little upset there. He saw his reaction. Say so they will tack it on as West Virginia has 10-24 to work with. It's going to be a long 10-24 for Herd fans. They want that clock to move with their defense, Arrington. Devin Arrington has played so well, as has Michael Janik. Can they stay stout? Stay with us. You're watching ESPN, new home of the full championship series. Playing favorites is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Mario Harvey has been Marshall's favorite tonight. He's been everywhere pressuring Geno Smith, sifting through rubble to make tackles in the backfield. Managing to get in and get a sack when he needs to. This guy has had a big night, 14 tackles, three tackles for loss, a sack, and yes, he's even forced to fumble. Defensive coordinator Chris Rippon said if Fred Flintstone could run a 4-4, it'd be Mario Harvey. Six foot, 250, fast as could be. West Virginia offense needs something here. Ball is loose. Ball comes loose. And Marshall has jumped on it. Vinnie Curry was quick to get to Geno Smith. And then Donald Brown came in and jumped right on it. Marshall just pushed West Virginia to the precipice. Now their offense with a chance. To toss them right off the cliff. Uh, Tess, don't talk about that offense yet. Look about this defense. Look at what they did here. It's just an absolute, complete dest destruction of that front. Vinny Curry, the first one in there. Brown gets the recovery, but it's that defensive line which has been fantastic all night long. Martinez. Tron Martinez giving a carry to the 15. Anthony Leonard steps up for the tackle. And now Marshall already up 15 sitting on the upset that this program has desired since 1911 oh, West when Virginia. they started playing West Virginia. West Virginia has to think about getting the ball out a takeaway a field goal here is a big problem for West Virginia. Marshall's last win versus a ranked team 2003. Anderson and gets it down to the eight yard line. Tron Martinez getting some work here at a critical juncture. They go with the true freshman running back. Nine fifteen and counting. They third and two. They still have the mismatch. The advantage with 16, Lee Smith, the tight end, top of the screen. He's six foot six. Martinez going to be close to that line to make. Looks like he's right on it. JT Thomas wrapped him up. Clock is under nine minutes. Now the officials will ask for the measurement here. Doc Holliday, could you imagine this? It's a Marshall first down. 
And it is a first down for the thundering herd. It was the spin on contact. Good running backs hit and spin on that contact, and he was able to spin off of that contact and get to the first down marker. Doc Holliday has never even been in this building for a game before. And there it is officially marked off. Grew up 20 minutes away, spent a career coaching up at West Virginia, went to the old stadium as a kid, but now in his home debut as their new head coach, he could pull off one of the greatest wins in program history. And it means so much to these fans in this area. Martinez gobbled, the ball comes loose, the ball comes loose, and West Virginia has it. That is exactly what they needed as Sidney Glover has recovered the fumble. Marshall was looking to put this one away, and there is still just a little life in those Mountaineers. Well, that's what we talked about. They could not afford to give up a field goal, any kind of a score. It would have made it a three-possession game. You mentioned Martinez. I said it was a guy. curious spot for yep. a true freshman to be in. The young guy was in there, and the ball comes out. Clearly out on contact before he's close to the ground. They're going to review it. We will take a break and come back. Big call coming up on this replay. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Toyota. Ball on the field stood up. A fumble recovered by West Virginia. Number 23 in the country is trailing by 15 with eight and a half to go against their in-state rival who has never beaten them. They started playing in 1911. Geno Smith from his own end zone. Downfield and complete to Sanders out to the 30-yard line. A lot has been made about this series between these two. Only two games left in it. In fact, the governor's gotten involved to try to continue the series. And now little brother is trying to take it to big brother. And Divine falls down. You know, Tess, I got one problem with what Marshall's doing defensively. Their safeties are playing 20, 25 yards deep. You know, this is a two-possession game, essentially. You let them roll down the field with a quick touchdown, they're right back in it. Now, the way that front four of Marshall has played, West Virginia still has issues to deal with regardless of the soft coverage deep. Uh, 18, 20 yards is a Yeah, that's much. a lot. Flag is down. And they go underneath to Sanders, who's a yard short of the original line of scrimmage. We'll check the flag. Illegal formation in the offense. Five players in the backfield. The penalties declined. Third down. Test. Take a look at how deep the safeties are playing here. That's 18, oh, yeah. 20 yards, you know, thereabout. And they're backpedaling out. So there are soft spots in the middle for West Virginia to just go down the field. Boy, and with those West Virginia slot receivers, Sanders and Austin, think they could take advantage of that. Let's see. Third and 14. Line to make is the 40. Pressure off the edge. Geno steps up. Going to try to run it himself. And he's got it. First down, Mountaineers. Geno Smith Great the decision. Great decision by Geno Smith. Not his preference to run, but once he makes up his mind, he knows where the marker is. It is just ridiculous, though, the pressure that Vinnie Curry is oh. getting off the edge. Oh. I mean, this guy's in the backfield all day long. First down. Pressure off the edge now. Here comes a cornerback blitz. They pick it up. And Will Johnson, who is starting at tight end in place of Tyler Urban with first down yardage. 16-yard gain for Johnson. So here come the Mountaineers. Block counts down. 
but they march down inside the 40 now. Smith steps up, airs it out, and that is complete inside the 10 yard line of Stedman Bailey. This is going to get interesting. Well, we showed you the coverage. They've been sitting in a two deep zone with the safeties, you know, way out of there. And that's the spot we talked about being open. Geno Smith found it, and look where they are right now. You nailed it, Rod. Coverage was soft to start this drive. Geno's taking advantage. Devine looking for the outside. Mario Harvey chasing him down. It'll make for second and goal. UTEP and Houston still to come your way. A double dip on Friday night football. That means Case Keenum. <laughs> One of the very best. Oh, great quarterback in Houston. For now, Geno Smith needs to play like a great quarterback. Under six minutes, second and goal. West Virginia desperate here. They like to give it to Devine down here. Smith stumbling forward as Vinny Curry. He's been like Velcro on Geno Smith all night long. The junior defensive end wouldn't let Smith get away. Third and goal. Divine. Touchdown, Mountaineers. Ten. When in doubt, go to your best, Rod. Yeah, they love him down here inside the 10-yard line. They, they know he's strong enough inside. But did you see the cut he made? He got a great block from Will Johnson. But watch the cut at the end. He's going full speed towards the sideline, looking for the hole, very patient. Now watch the cut. Right now, there he is. Going for one to extend the game. Still a one possession game. Only down by eight now. A nine play, 96 yard drive after that fumble recovery when Marshall could have put the game away. TV drive to the national championship yep. bus is right here in West Virginia. I'm hopping on That's that your thing. Ride. Going up to Columbus, calling the game in 3D tomorrow. That's gonna be a great one, but we have a great one right in front of us right here as Noel Devine, a 96-yard drive, and he pulls West Virginia back in to position. Just down by eight now against Doc Holliday and this upset-minded Marshall team. Smart decision by West Virginia to go for one, keep it a one-possession game, and no need for an onside kick. Andre Booker on the return. Let's check in with Beth Mowens. Two explosive offenses are set to get after it in a Conference USA showdown tonight in Houston. Cougars quarterback Case Keenum is top 10 all time in FBS career passing yards and passing touchdowns. He'll try and light up the night against the UTEP Miners. That's coming up. A Conference USA showdown between the Cougars and the Miners. Quarterback Case Keenum still to come. Right now, it is going to come down to Marshall playing steady and ball secure offense and trying to bring that clock down. Remember, they had the true freshman in and he fumbled on the goal line, Martinez. So now it's Ward. And Ward gets loose for a first down and more. Still on his feet. Out to the 48 yard line, Martin Ward. Tron Martinez, the true freshman, fumbled down at the four. Now they go to the more experienced Ward, and he gets some good field position right up the gut of that defense. Well, you made the point. Ward is a guy who was an MVP of a bowl game last year for Marshall. And watch the tackles he breaks, the extra yardage he gets. That's one he slips through, never has his knee go down, breaks off another tackle. That's pure, pure determination. Man, that's good stuff. He has 10 rushes for 101 yards tonight. Replaced by Andre Booker now. He's the smaller, more elusive back. 
Here is Booker. Cuts back into the meat of that defense. And that clock is coming towards the four-minute mark. West Virginia needs to stop them. And just as West Virginia needs to stop them, Marshall needs to keep running the ball, running the clock, picking up a first down if they can. Teams want to be able to run in the fourth quarter to close out a game, to shorten the game. They have never defeated West Virginia. Bringing that play clock down, taking every valuable second off of it. Ward back in. And Ward is taken down. Ward on the carry. Bruce Urban coming up and making a good defensive play. And now the third and long allows West Virginia to get into their pass rushing set to bring in extra defensive backs. West Virginia calls a timeout. They've got plenty of them. A couple more left. It's been a night of miscues for Bill Stewart's team. They've moved the ball, but in key situations, they couldn't get it done. Fourth down stand kept them out. Divine fumbles when they were on the move. They had a field goal block, which would have cut the game to a one possession game. And then a fumble earlier this quarter, which set up Marshall to bleed more time off the clock. It didn't result in the score. And there are so many storylines in this game. Yeah. It's not just little brother, big brother. It's yeah. the fact that Doc Holliday, yeah. just nine months ago, was on the opposing staff. Yeah. And there was a thought just a few years ago that Doc Holliday was the leading candidate to be the head coach at West Virginia. Mm -hmm. There have been yeah. a few other things that have been reported on in the past few months. Yeah. Yeah. The relationship isn't as great as people on the outside think it is. And this would be a really big win for Doc Holliday. If they can keep it going here. Booker. He spins, and let's see where they mark him. He's going to be a yard short of that line to make. Keith Tandy took him down. As tempting as it may be hmm. for Marshall, huh. you got to kick this football. Timeout, West Virginia. You have to kick this and let your defense play. Back them up, give them a long field, and then simply do something other than drop your safeties 20, 25 yards. Fourth and one, and it'll all come down to this. Well, we have a moment. Let's check in with Reese. Yeah, I was eyeing some of those UTEP wide receivers for our fantasy football picks and our Friday fantasy football. Tyrone Carrier in the game, but we will see right now. Forget the high-scoring quarterbacks. Special teams and some tough defense are going to come into play in front of us here. So they sent on the punt team. Brandon Hogan settled in at the 10. Whitehead's kick, high and directional. How about that? Wow. Was that not just the perfect situation for Marshall? Of course, Monday Night Football kicks off September 13th, 7 Eastern. You got Ravens, Jets, Mark Sanchez and the Jets. High expectations for them. Then at 10-15, Phillip Rivers leads the Chargers against the Chiefs. Monday Night Football on ESPN. It all begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. That starts at 5 Eastern. Of course, your college football day starts tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern with ESPNU's game day before Monster Saturday. That Monday night game, saw where Ray Lewis said that the Jets are doing way too much talking. From the two-yard line, they will begin. Smith to Devine. Here comes Noel Devine. Taken down hard, but a first down for West Virginia. Donald Brown laid a little wood. Marshall defenders complaining they were held in the end zone. Had that been the case, that would have been a safety. 
it was 21 to 6 Marshall was knocking on the door they fumbled at the four they had a 96 yard drive moments ago to pull with an eight Bailey Stedman Bailey out to the 20 yard line there's plenty of time and they have a timeout no reason for West Virginia to panic Marshall has backed off of the pressure last time they only brought three up front they got to go back to bringing at least four and maybe bring a fifth guy only rushing three here against Gino over the middle incomplete he was looking for Bailey yeah Smith has struggled at times tonight because he's been under duress and right now Marshall has backed off of that they're not even bringing four guys which they were doing all night long and harassing Smith largest crowd ever here so we got a fan on the field and we've got the authorities coming out to remove him. There are about 20 state troopers now running across the field. Is we're not going to show that madness. Bill Stewart just looks on. The Marshall defense has been sensational tonight, and Vinnie Curry has been a big part of it from his defensive end position, chasing down Geno Smith. Well, he's been incredible pressure from the edge. A couple of sacks force fumbles a couple tackles for losses he's been in the backfield and has forced Smith to be uncomfortable in the pocket well you want divine your top player to touch the football he's been on fire in the second half and if you're going to make a run he's gonna have to be the guy the number one man in career rushing yards among active players nationally and not that long ago he capped that 96 yard drive with a four yard touchdown to pull West Virginia within eight Marshall 0 for 9 in taking their swing at bat against West Virginia going back to 1911 third and three Smith to pass Complete for a first down to Stedman Bailey. Geno Smith. What a defining moment this could be early in his career. The sophomore from Florida, who they've handed over the keys of this offense to. They have a lot of faith in him. Steps forward now. Smith. First down and more. Smith out past the 45-yard line. Rashad Jackson, the cornerback, had to come up and find Geno Smith. Uh, he's just making really good decisions, being patient. He was decisive when he felt the pressure and saw the lane. Clock running down towards two minutes. They need the touchdown and the conversion. Smith complete again. Uh, you know, Tess, he anticipated that they would bring pressure because they were struggling. Had Tavon Austin out there in single coverage. They tipped the pressure. He went right away to Austin. Right now, he's reading the Marshall defense like an open book. Feels very comfortable right now, does Smith. They hurry it up. Minute 56. And the flags come in. Ball start. 72 on the offense. Cole Bowers, the right guard. He's hitting himself in the head. He says, why? Why now? It'll just back them up to make for a second and nine. Again. Got him again. Full start. 64 on the offense. Five yards, second down. Frenzied atmosphere here. Fast pace, high pressure. And a couple of the offensive linemen are feeling it. So a second and 14. Smith steps up in the pocket. Under throws it. He was pressured again by Curry and company. Uh, it, it only takes the four-man rush to do that. 77, Demetrius Thompson was the guy getting in there with also who else but Harvey. The guy who's had the best night of all defensively. UTEP and Houston still to come. For now, can Marshall D up? Third and 14. 
Geno Smith changing things here. Lots of time. Austin at midfield, and Austin is going to be short of the first down by about a yard and a half as Harvey and Jackson combined to tackle him there. Great job, though. They didn't have to get it all. They cut into that distance, and now it's a fourth and short. You can see Stewart very happy with the fact that they're close. Here's the game. First down, West Virginia. They stay alive with a minute 18 to go. Noel Devine. Well, they have Devine in the flat anytime they want him. He's the valve, the safety valve. They send him out there as the hot receiver every single play. And Smith knows that's where he is. He's trying to get something down the field, but when it's not there, he looks right away to number seven. Courageous young quarterback Geno Smith in a tough spot. Marshall brings pressure. Smith steps up. Downfield over throws Stedman Bailey. And Bailey streaking down the near sideline. And Bill Stewart says that could have been. Well, there was a safety coming over the top. Was going to take a perfect throw to get that in there. They have plenty of time. No need to panic. They can t still do this in chunks. Marshall wants to use a timeout here. West Virginia has one left. Jones C. Edwards Stadium here in Huntington, West Virginia. The record attendance for this in-state rivalry. Although Doc Holliday, the head coach, the new head coach at Marshall, was quick to say, this isn't a rivalry. We've never beat them. It'll be a rivalry when we beat them. Nine times the little brother has stepped up against the mighty Mountaineers. Nine times they've been denied. They started playing them in 1911. Rod, and there's been a lot of talk about Marshall arguing to keep the series alive. The governor even had to get involved. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and Marshall's got to make his case. And they're trying to make their case tonight as to why they ought to be playing this team and that they are good enough to play them. You hold on to this and you won't need political pressures. Or could it be that Geno Smith and the Mountaineers can pull this one out of the fire? Trailing by eight. Austin, good block, and Austin has a first down for West Virginia just inside the 25. What a tremendous job the receivers did out there on the edge blocking on that screen. And Austin, great speed, just took off. He saw the block and just split them. Divine now. Geno Smith tried to run ahead and give him a block, and Devine gets it down to the 20. And that clock becoming a concern. Under a minute to go. One timeout remaining. Number 23 in the country against the upset-minded Marshall squad. Smith. And Austin does the smart thing and gets out of bounds right near that first down marker. How about the patience Smith has shown on this drive? Hasn't really forced it, has taken everything given to him, check down, hot receivers, tuck the ball, run for a first down. In his first year as the starter, that is, too. So it is a first down. 14-yard line. Gino, lots of time. That ball was inside the five, and the flag comes in. Jock Sanders was going low for that ball, and Omar Brown may have gotten there early, Rod. Yeah, Brown's been a bit aggressive all night, got flagged earlier for an unsportsmanlike conduct. Pass interference. 31 on the defense. Put down by the foul. 34 seconds remain. And it'll be first and goal. Yeah, Tess, he can't make a play on this ball either. His ball's too low and in the ground. He gets there early. 
Will Stewart still needs one final push. They'll give it to Devine down here. They really trust him with the football down here. Marshall trying to call a timeout. Devine scores the touchdown, but did they get the timeout? Doc Holliday was running onto the field. Marshall called timeout. Third timeout. Doc Holliday was sprinting as if he was in the NFL combine trying to prove himself all the way down to the 10 yard line, and he got the timeout. And they didn't have enough guys on the field. He was trying to run a guy on the field as he was short a guy, and he was going to get flagged for the guy running out on the field late anyway. So take a look at the bottom of the screen. You'll see a guy come running on from Marshall. Right there, bottom of the screen. They were short. That's Jackson. No, it's not Jackson. Who's that? Ahmad Shakur. Shakur. Shakur is running on. And then there's Doc Holliday. Yep, down there at the 10 yard line. Yeah, they would have been flagged for that late substitution. Plus, he was, he was offsides also running on the field. So, getting that timeout in just before the snap, that took away what West Virginia assumed was going to be the touchdown by Devine. This is the 14th play of a drive that started at their own two-yard line. First and goal. This is really Devine's territory. They love to give him the ball down here, not just because of his speed, but they trust him with the football. Smith is taken down at the five. Vinny Curry again. They have a timeout left. They're going to hurry up and get off a play here. Smith to pass. Still looking. Wide open in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Will Johnson. 12 seconds left, and West Virginia is a two-point conversion away from tying this game. How about Smith's composure and patience? He waits a long time and throws a perfect ball in the deep corner. Are you kidding me? Look at that. That's a great catch. And then one, two. Only needs one foot in. Gets the left one in. Keep in mind, this is a drive that started at their own two-yard line. They're taking a look at this catch by Will Johnson, but I think we showed a pretty good look at it, Rod. Yeah, it's not an issue of whether he had control of the ball. It is simply that left foot. Was it in bounds? And from our first view, it looked like he got that left foot down without it being on the in line of the end zone. Watch the left foot. Catch, toe, that looks like it's in. See a little green behind him. And you need indisputable video evidence to overturn the touchdown call on the field. That's a tremendous catch. Leaping high and getting that foot down. The clock was running. They didn't use their timeout. Smith lined them up and said, let's play ball and try to make this happen. How about the great coaching decisions by Stewart in the fourth quarter going for the, the the one point to get themselves within the two possession giving his quarterback time making sure that they didn't try and get too much they took their time getting down the field using Noel Devine getting themselves right back in position West Virginia was trailing in the fourth quarter 21 to 6. Their two scoring drives went 96 yards and 98 yards, but it's all going to come down to three yards. Yep. Two points. Assuming conversion. this review holds up, which it should. And Marshall was in position when the score was 21 to 6 to put this game away, and they gave the ball to the freshman running back who fumbled at the four. Yeah. Tron Martinez. Struggling for a little extra yardage. Had George Wright jump on him from behind. After review, ruling on the field stands. Touchdown, West Virginia. All right, Rod, what do you 
dial up here to tie this game? Well, the first assumption from everybody, I would be, I would believe, is no Devon, is getting him the football. I think Marshall's going to be looking that way. So you may have to look more, just like they did, corner of the end zone, some sort of a run pass option for Smith. But Devine is going to get lots of attention right now. Will this define a program for Marshall? Or will number 23 send it to overtime? We got a tie game. John Sanders secures it in the back of the end zone. Test that is the safest place to throw the football down here. It is safe because you're taught defensively to keep everything in front of you. The back of the end zone, you ignore. You treat that as another defender for you. So good quarterbacks with touch can work the back of the end zone and get points. That is about as improbable a comeback as you will see, considering that Marshall could have sealed this game. You see everyone trying to keep defenders in front of them. Sanders works the back of the end zone. Smith understands it. Nice touch on it. Just a nod of the head from Bill Stewart. Meanwhile, for Doc Holliday, that stings. Two scoring drives of 96 yards, 98 yards in the fourth quarter, plus the two-point conversion. Hey, Tess, this is what we're talking about. A lot of teams play zone down in the end zone here, and they really set up a picket line. Look at all the green shirts lined up on the goal line. So if you want to work and score in here, you got to work the back of the end zone. And that's exactly what they do here. Get behind those guys and work the back of the end zone. There was eight and a half minutes on the clock, 21 to six, and Marshall fumbled at the four. Evans now. Troy Evans gets out across the 40 with four seconds left. Well, did you see the East Carolina game the other day? <laughs> Yeah, we've had our share of overtime games. Hail Mary touches already this season. Worth a shot. Well, you figure you might get it. You might get a penalty. Anything that would give you one more play or one more shot. Wilson, Dobson to the top side for Anderson. Hook and lateral. Loose ball, scooped up, clock runs out. Andre Booker secured the ball, and we've got overtime between West Virginia and Marshall. A great comeback by the Mountaineers. Overtime when we return. Matt Houston's on the move now. So UTEP off to a start here. and We've got a fabulous finish here. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you in Huntington, West Virginia for overtime. Marshall, 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 Defense first, as is the case. Rod. Uh, let it be known, if this does come down to the kicker, mm -hmm. West Virginia's got the edge in that department. I'll say one other thing. We haven't seen the Marshall offense in a long time here. Yeah, yeah, they're probably a little frustrated, a little cold. You know, they're not in a rhythm right now, but, you know, this is a whole new deal. You got 25 yards, like baseball, home team, visiting team. You get another at bat if you're on defense versus, which is what we have here with uh, West Virginia. So we'll see how this goes forward, but you have to feel like West Virginia is in a flow right now, a rhythm with oh, the way Smith momentum. has been handling the
the football at quarterback. We'll see. Let's show you the rules for overtime here. Of course, as Rod says, it is baseball style. You match. Each team gets a possession. 25-yard line, you start. No game clock, no play clock. If we get to a third overtime and the way this game has gone, that could be the case. You must go for two after scoring a touchdown. But as I said, if the kickers are getting involved, we know what we're getting with Bittencourt in West Virginia. He is solid. We also know that Uncle Mo momentum is on the side of that Mountaineer offense. Two scoring drives in the fourth quarter to mount this comeback. 96 yarder and a 98 yarder. I am still troubled by that drive when Marshall was up by two scores and they backed off for the pressure and they played their safety 20 yards deep. Let him come right down the yep. field. West Virginia took advantage of it, threw the ball in the middle, got a score to get within one possession, and then had that last drive, last score right before regulation ended. So West Virginia on offense to start our first overtime. Smith to pass. Loses the ball. Jumps right on it. Well, that was critical. Wow. Wow. James Rouse was right there with Geno Smith, and if Rouse had gotten to that ball, Marshall would have been set just to simply score a field goal and win this game. Well, if Geno Smith doesn't lose his ball, he's got his man Devine sitting right out there. He's going to go a long way. So West Virginia is now backed up to the 34. Now they get Devine. Blockers in front. And he is still on his feet down to the original line of scrimmage, the 25. Tackled by Kevin Perry. Marshall has had leads against West Virginia before, but this one was awful late with a chance to put it away. West Virginia has never lost to Marshall. Third and 10. Austin. First down, still on his feet, run out at the 12. Tess, we talked about yards after the catch. Well, and Tavon Austin's the man for that. Oh, when he's in space, a little bit of room, he makes guys miss, he gets plenty of yardage after the catch. It's like a long handoff to him. So a first down at the 12. Divine the lone back as Smith is now under center. Sanders in motion. Pitch to Divine. Cuts back inside the 10, driving his feet forward to the five. He is dynamic. That should have been a three or four yard loss. But he sticks that foot in the ground and he changes direction right now. Rod, how tired is this Marshall defense after giving up those two long drives in the fourth quarter? Oh, well, they have to be really burned, really burned. Devine has 110 yards. Ryan Clark now in that fullback position in front of Devine. Here is Noel. Short of that first down line. Kellen Harris and Donald Brown on the tackle. Marshall saying, hey, we came up with that football. But it'll end up as a third and short here. He may only be 5'8", but he's very strong. Divine really can go inside. Oh. How about, uh, oh, that's, that's Clark just taking Brown and throwing him to the ground. And no official saw it or flagged it. He just peeled him off. Third and two. Clark now the big back. Smith being chased down. Incomplete. So on third and short, Vinnie Curry chasing down Geno Smith again. Well, I'm surprised that they went with that with the package they had in. They had the jumbo yep. backfield in that they've had success with, and yet they do that. Yeah. And Marshall, kudos to, to Vinnie Curry for holding down his edge and making sure he didn't let the quarterback, Smith, get outside of him. Tyler Bittencourt, remember he had one block, had that clutch game-winning field goal against Pitt. This attempt just from 20. And he puts it through with ease. So let's show you how we arrived 
at overtime. They were down 21-6, and then they got the ball back. One last desperation starting from their own two-yard line. Yeah, and Noel Devine was huge on that drive, as was Smith making great decisions. When he tucked the ball and ran, it was the right thing to do. Short passes, many of them going to Noel Devine, got them going before they got the touchdown pass in the corner of the end zone. And that was a nice, great catch. Will Johnson kept that left foot down with a great catch. And West Virginia's first lead of the game now comes in overtime. Geno Smith trying to define himself early on in his West Virginia career. Remember UTEP Houston still to come your way. Booker taken down. A big loss on the play. Najee Good getting after Booker. Reminder, when we are done, we will get you out to see UTEP and Case Keenum and Houston. Test. We're now a second and 17. Wilson has been the big go-to guy on the outside. He is number nine. He's been a star tonight for the herd. Anderson now has time, and he's able to get it to Dobson. Dobson cut down at the 22. Reminder that UTEP Houston can be seen on ESPN Classic right now. And then we will join it after our conclusion here in Huntington. West Virginia striking first in the first overtime with a field goal from Bittencourt. And now Marshall facing a third and seven. They need to make sure that they get rid of the ball quickly. Can't take a sack here. You're already in field goal range. Pressure up the middle. Gets it off. And that falls incomplete. So now they will need the field goal to tie this game. That was Brenton Browser with the big hit at the end there. Tyler Warner, the junior from Parkersburg, West Virginia. He's, he's looking at about a 40-yarder here. 39, 40 yards. Last week, he was 0 for 1. Doesn't have a lot of experience. 40-yard attempt. His career long is only 37. This to stay alive, or West Virginia wins it. It is no good. He just missed to the right. And once again, West Virginia has done it against Marshall. A classic comeback. way through the fourth quarter everything appeared to be lining up but in the end this didn't line up he pushed it just to the right it's high enough it looked like it was almost there just off to the right Tyler Warner he can't believe it he thought it possibly just went right over the bar but not the case They've been playing this series since 1911. Doc Holliday was on that West Virginia staff. And now he came so close, but could not pull it out. Two big drives in the fourth quarter. A 96-yard drive, a 98-yard drive, the two-point conversion, and then the field goal in overtime. The great comeback by West Virginia. Number 23 avoids the upset, 24-21 in overtime. We're going to get you out to UTEP and Houston. For Rod Gilmore and our entire crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. Glad you were with us tonight. Coming up next, UTEP and Houston. More college football on your Friday. Enjoy.